My name is Anna Solberg. I am the Norwegian Prime Minister. When you think of Norway, you think of its 5.4 million people and how its low crime rate, universal health coverage and comprehensive social security system makes this one of the most inclusive societies today. Relatively poor before the discovery of oil and gas, it now has the fourth highest per capita income according to the IMF and World Bank. But how will it negotiate a new landscape where COVID-19 exists? I'm James Chow, host of The China Current. This special interview with Prime Minister Solberg is in partnership with Xi, the community, conference and movement to encourage equality in business, drive growth and create real change in society. When we get the vaccines uh, that is not just given for people who have states and governments who are able to pay for it, but also is distributed more fairly. You describe that as one of the challenging multilateral issues ahead for fairness yes. and equity in terms of a vaccine that's offered. I mean, some countries have said that they will offer it as a global public good. Um, are you confident, though, that we will overcome that hill, that we will achieve that equity together? I hope. I think that's one of the reasons why we have been supportive both of SEPA, this coalition for, for preparedness against pandemics and epidemics when it comes to vaccines, and, uh, and, and Gavi, because those are the two biggest um, international bodies we now have together with the World Health Organization to make sure that we are producing a vaccine. We are researching it, but also producing it in a different, different countries and make sure that it's a, it is a universal um, and, and that it is a common good for the whole world. Prime Minister, you, through this work over the last few months and all the preparation that came ahead of this pandemic, have helped save millions of lives, families and also communities. When we look ahead, though, there are going to be other challenges, especially with Norway as one of the world's top petroleum exporting countries. Yeah. And at a time when COVID-19 is causing oil markets to collapse, would it be too much to say then that this could present you with the biggest challenge that you face as a leader? Absolutely. We, we did have a very low uh, uh, oil price which was a shock to our economy in 2014-15. We had a crisis round at that time too, but this is deeper. It's both a health crisis and it's an economic crisis. And Norway is, of course, to, uh, uh, like all other countries, hit by the, on the economic side by our own measures but uh, to combat the pandemic, but also the international uh, effects of the pandemic. Norway is a small country with a very open economy, meaning that we are extremely dependent on other countries' economic development for our own businesses. And then, of course, we have a very low oil price, mainly now due to the COVID-19 and very low activities. I mean, there are hardly any planes going these days. The whole infrastructure need for energy is very low. But also because we had this uh, oil price war in the start of this point where uh, US, Saudi Arabia and Russia was in, uh, and, um, in a bit of a conflict on how to settle production rates. So we feel that we have a double hit uh, uh, economically. Uh, we have a sound economic basis. We have, of course, the sovereign fund that we have been saving money in investing internationally so that compared to other countries who very often have to contract their public budgets in times of crisis, we have a pub, uh, possibility to expand. That means that we can um, um, contra, uh, we can work against the effects in our internal economy on, on, on cutbacks in budgets because we, we do have enough money to that. But it is insecurity, it's job, we have Unemployment rates around 10%, which we, which we haven't had since the, since the 30s. The Great Depression is what we can compare ourselves to when it comes to unemployment rate. The difference is, of course, that we have uh, income uh, guarantee systems. That means that people are not suffering the way they did in the 30s, that they are still getting money paid by the state uh, in compensations for for being out of work permanently or temporary. We do have some, some better ways of dealing with it, but it's going to take time to come back. And that's also the same for the world economy. 
And for all of those millions of people who are living and working in the tourist industry, I think they are among those who is going to be most hit the, uh, the next years. And we know a lot of countries, uh, that is jobs where the pay is low, it's uh, a lot of people there working there that is, uh, of course, hit the most all over the world. You're Prime Minister of Norway, of around 5 million people, and you are a person to whom millions more around the world look up to and aspire to. What is your message to the world at a time when we are confused and deeply, deeply fragile? First of all, I'm a basically optimistic person. I think we will both learn from the experience and we will move forward after this. But we do really need to think, focus on one thing. The pandemic is an international catastrophe. It needs more international cooperation. We need more multilateralism, not less multilateralism. We will not cope with these issues in the future if we don't, in fact, work more together. And, uh, and if people think that this is the thing where we can close our borders and say we need to cooperate less, then we will lose out on welfare, on knowledge, and the technology that we are in is moving so fast that we need to work even harder together in the future. And I think what really COVID-19 should show us is that we need more international cooperation. We need to have more international policies, not just international economy and technology, but we also need international policies to work on this. Because I believe, as a firm believer in human rights and democracy, I believe that it should not be technology, not capital, not that runs the world. It should, in fact, be politicians that are multilateral cooperating that to solve common, uh, common issues in the future. That will be my main message to everybody. I think it's, uh, uh, we will all just lose out on jobs, welfare and a better living if we are believing that uh, politics can turn inwards and, and, and not uh, support a multilateral approach to these issues. Prime Minister Anna Solberg, it is an honour speaking with you and we thank you. Thank you. You can listen to the full conversation with Erna Solberg at chinacurrent.com or your preferred podcast platform. This interview is a special partnership with Xi, the community conference and movement to achieve global gender equality. Be a part of the transformation and join their call to action. You can sign up at xiinsight.com.